Can people see me now? <laughs> hey, everybody. Woo. <laughs> I've, uh, I don't know why I'm so nervous to pull this together. I'm really excited about this series. So I really appreciate everyone that's, uh, joined and, um, following. I'm just writing down some names of people. So no one is left off. Um, my, I see my wife's on. Hello, Georgia. Lauren, I'm sorry we missed Wilma. She's probably asleep right now. Eric, thanks for joining. Jeff, great to see you. Oh, hey, you're with Katrina too. Awesome. My friends are here. Hi, Lauren. Thank you. Yes. Merch store. <laughs> I'm writing some names down because that's going to be important for the games when the games come soon. So I'd like to introduce, I'm going to add them to the stream right now. If you guys are ready, nod in the studio, if you're ready. Yes. <laughs> so we are adding Megan and Ben. Hey, coming in. Okay. Can you hear me all right? Yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you fine. Megan, you look like you're muted. Maybe. Did that work? That works. Yes. Okay. <laughs> hey. Nice. Hey. hey. Guys, thanks for joining so much. It means so much to me. Absolutely. Of course. Um, so for those who don't know, Amy, oh my God, what time is it where you are? <laughs> <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining. I was just about to ask uh, Megan and Ben to introduce themselves. Um, they're fellow, they're friends and fellow author tubers, and they are published now, right? Um, almost there. Almost. Well, I mean, you got, I don't want to, well, you go, you tell. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Hi, everyone. I'm Ben Pick. Every Monday night, I post weekly videos about running compared to writing as running to write. And my tagline is I give questionable writing advice through running metaphors. My debut novel comes out August 6th, so less than a month away. And I am really excited, but that's not important. We are here for Lisa Cooper <laughs> and J.M. Chaley. Thank you so much. Megan. My turn? Okay. Yeah. Hello, friends. I am Megan Aldridge, newly published author, which is crazy to say. Yay! Yes. Um, here, I'll show, I'll show my book. Here it is. Queendom of Chaos, which came out on June 14th. So, less than a month ago. Oh, there it is. I see that glass. <laughs> <laughs> Just plugging it. Uh, okay, so yes. my book is a, uh, it's a dark fantasy historical romance, and it's got early 20th century America and we've got Greek mythology and we've got magic and all sorts of awesome stuff in it. So uh, it's up on Amazon and Barnes and Noble and basically anywhere that you can buy a book. Yes. That's awesome. So yeah, I, I thank you all for, for coming. I'm just blown away with uh, the support and, you know, everyone joining. I, I'm pretty excited. I got some, I got some games lined up, uh, all participation and um about a month or so ago i i launched my um my merch store you know on teespring so it's got this t-shirt here of course the final product says uh the unlife of lisa cooper on it but it's got this art um and uh i also have and i got a couple of these um Ooh. I should be writing. We're all guilty. Sure. So when you're out and about at the grocery store or whatever, you know you should be, you know, you feel like. And there's another version of this too that says you should be writing so you can accuse other people that you know should be writing. So that's available on my merch store. And I'm I'm telling you this because the prize these are these can be prizes and these can be put on t-shirts, mugs, slippers. 
Why? I don't know. Yeah, but crazy they do. Stuff. Hats. Um, <laughs> I'm not ignoring you and plotting your next book. Uh, Love um, it. Um, they could be put on notebooks. I know. Um, try not to knock stuff over. This is one that Megan did for hers, and it's a gorgeous notebook. And um, of course, mine would not say that. It would say. Uh, <laughs> The Life of Lisa Cooper with this art on it. And that's another thing that you do. So there's going to be uh, one game where you can win something from my merch store. And then for everyone who stays with the, uh, everyone who stays with the chat um, through the whole thing, we put in randomly picked for another opportunity to win something from my merch store. So but everybody who stays with me will get a sticker. I am keep moving this. You can't see it because of the cellophane. But it's just a little sticker. Everyone everyone is a winner. Um, <laughs> so all you have to do if you want a underwear, um, I don't know. They have bras. They have sports they, bras. Do they have sports bras or pajamas mm -hmm. maybe? I don't know if those count. And I think, I think they have like biker shorts. So... Mm -hmm. Socks. They have, they have socks. Underwear, but... <laughs> I know they have socks because <laughs> that was another thing I noticed. Um, but yeah, definitely if, if you want to uh, if you want a sticker, you send me an email at jmjaley1918 at gmail.com and I will get a sticker out to you. So yeah. Um, let's talk a little bit about the series, if you haven't checked it out um, before getting into the first game, just in case people aren't familiar with it. Um, and I should have had this teed up already and I didn't. <laughs> All I'm going to do is read you the kind of the little blurb. It's a short little Kindle Vela lets you put in a little blurb that describe your series and they only give you 500 characters, but I'll read what I have. So it's a little sh short little not even a synopsis, basically an overview of the series. Lisa Cooper is not a monster. At least that's what she keeps telling herself. For over a century and a half, she has kept the toll of her curse at bay. But rejecting her dark nature has a price. In a life where really, sorry, in a life where Lisa struggles against rival vampires, vicious fae, and even old gods, she must leverage other means to overcome her adversaries. Drawing from her curse could grant her the power she needs, but it would cost her the last remnants of the woman she was in life. Oof. So, and if you've read episodes one through three, which came out first, four, five, six dropped today. I don't know if some of you may have read those already. Um, you'll see what that struggle looks like the temptation. She's pretty strong. She's been staving off the curse for a while. Um, so, but you know, she's still a, a creature of darkness that is going to have those temptations. Thanks Lauren. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to step it up with some, some, some quality goods. Um, no gender specificity. No, I guess unless you get the bra, but you know, hey, I'm, anybody can wear a, a bra, I guess. Um, <laughs> can I stick with you? Yes. That's my mom. <laughs> oh, thank you so for joining. That's awesome. So I think she's referring to when she was on my live stream, she couldn't win anything because family can't win prizes. So oh, like, I can win stuff here. See, that's awesome. Well, definitely then. Well, if everyone's getting getting a sticker, so you're already a winner. Winner. Oh my God, Mina is here. Thank you so much for joining. I am wow. I'm floored. This is awesome. You guys are you're awesome. The whole world. <laughs> uh, even if you can just stop by, it means so much to me. I thank you so much um, for your support. Uh, Mina has a book out now called South. Um, which looks fantastic. A very slow burn LGBTQ plus romance. Oh my God. There, yes. Thank you, Megan. You got it. So good. 
and uh, her YouTube channel was amazing and awesome and lots of fun. Um, walks through Korea, lots of fun. Can we read the story if we don't have a Kindle? Yes, yes. So you can read this on your phone. You can read this on a computer. I don't know if it's available in Korea. I was able to read it um, when I was in St. Martin, which is out of the U.S. But, um, oh, my God, I'm so sorry. My Kindle, my, sorry. Computer, stop. I'm so sorry. That was my Alexa. Um <laughs> Now we need to see what we can get your Alexa to do. Some the magical the words there, and she sprung to life and started reading my my TBR for me. Um, so no, I don't know if if the the Vela series can be read outside of the U.S. in specific countries. I know we were able to do it in St. Martin, which is out of the U.S. Um, so I don't know if it's available in Korea, but yes, you don't need a Kindle to do it. Laughing. Oh, the browser. Yeah, yeah. Ben may have answered already. Yeah, I don't know if there's a a, a a country a country thing or not. I've had people tell me they can't. Oh, cool. Okay. Thank you so much. So, does anyone have any questions about the the setting or? I mean, I'll. I'll talk stuff. I won't necessarily spoil stuff, but I'll I'll spill some tea <laughs> if you guys want me to. Oh gosh, oh, all of it, all the tea. <laughs> Definitely going to be heating up um, some of the rivals and stuff. You see a little bit of them in this very first arc. The episodes. I'm I'm trying to treat it, you know, like not necessarily like chapters in a book, but more like episodes in a television show, and introducing like a story arc where it's not really like a television series uh, season, but it's more like just a, I don't know, more like a, just a story arc and then move on to the next one. So this first arc, I'll tell you, there's nine episodes to resolve the problem, the big problem she has right now. She's got like a, a little problem pops up every episode, if you notice, but the bigger problem will be resolved in like nine episodes. And then on to the next problem, which is going to be, you know, and each problem is worse than the last one, I think, for poor Lisa. But sure. yeah, yeah, she pipes up when least expect it. And then it doesn't help that I have these routines set, mostly to annoy my wife. But every now and then she'll spring to life and be like, hey, Georgia, do you want a little pizza? You know, and and it's coming from the basement because that's where my my mine is and she yells at me but um we have fun <laughs> i try to keep my house as stupid as possible that's right <laughs> and of course i have it respond to um uh computer and not alexa because i pretend we're in star trek <laughs> um oh so yes so basically, the the Kindle Vela series is about um, this vampire who is 150 years old, and she is basically holding on to her humanity as best she can in a world where other vampires have abandoned them due to their age or their corruption or their desire for power. And in this setting, when vampires hold on to their curse and... and um, and draw on their curse more, they actually begin to rot and look more dead. Um, Lisa being as humane as she is actually retains the, the color of life. Her skin is warm. You know, she can withstand sun a little bit better than others, but she'll still burn. Um, so she does very well in that department when it comes to, uh, staving off her curse, but it also leaves her less powerful than her her fellow. So she's not as strong or as fast as as other vampires. So that's kind of the the trade off: humanity for power. And she chose humanity. I was right at Manly. Yeah, that'd be awesome. I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear what you think. 
Oh yeah. Awesome. Katrina has been a big help. She's on my street team too, but she's not on discord. So we, I've been emailing her and she's been awesome posting stuff on Facebook and I really appreciate it. Katrina's my cousin. That's awesome. Yeah. Nice. I've just been so touched with all the support from everybody. How many episodes will there be? Um, in this arc that's going on right now, there'll be nine episodes. In the next story arc, there'll be, gosh, maybe 10 to 13. I'm not sure, but it's an ongoing series. And I have outlined um, several arcs out. Um, you know, I'll, I'll tell you that things are going to get a lot more dangerous for her. I mentioned old gods. We're going to be seeing the old, you know, there's going to be Irish gods and Greek gods and stuff like that tampering in her business as as she kind of like levels up you know further down the road um so we'll see her getting into all sorts of different adventures and ticking off very very powerful things so it's it's an ongoing series oh yeah the the art is uh cynthia connor um and if you she's actually on um Cyborg Central as Dracon Fear. I, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, Cynthia Connor Art is her website, and that's Connor with an E. And uh, yeah, she was she was awesome. Yeah, I wanted a good looking cover art, you know. So she was great. Yes, definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, Odette Bach did the portraits for A Flower in Hell, and she's also really, really amazing. I wanted to give this a different feel. I'm going to keep using Odette for all the Cynthia stuff that I have. That's my other work in progress that I'm querying to get published. And I wanted to have this kind of like modern day urban fantasy stuff with a different art style. Yeah. Speaking of, of this setting, um, Lauren uh, has an anthology coming out, I believe. Um, for is it is it is it stories of enchantments? Did I, did I say get the title right, Lauren? Um, but it's a collection of short stories and I think poems. If I'm correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm making this totally wrong, Lauren. But um, she's got this anthology coming out and. I submitted a short story to that anthology that takes place in the same universe as Lisa, but it's about sirens. Um, you know, the Greek mythology sirens. So thank you. No, creepy cool. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> so let's go into the, the first game. If, uh, unless anyone else has any questions. Yeah. And this is called the two truths and a lie. The, the Lisa Cooper edition. So if you've read the first three episodes, you've got a leg up on, on, uh, who can, you, you'll, you'll be able to answer the questions better. Sorry. I'm a little, I'm still a little, ah, you know, <laughs> you. thank you. Realms of enchantment, poetry and short stories. Coming in September. Yes, we'll definitely keep an eye out for that. Thank you, Lauren. All right, so let's see if I can do this. Oh, it worked. Okay. All right, so, and put your answers in the chat. And, you know, Megan and Ben, you can just say them if you know them. Um, one of these is a lie. So it's two, two of these things are true. This will be the same of every slide. Two of these things are true. And then one of them is a lie. Lisa was turned in the 1860s. Lisa lives in Vermont. Lisa hates techno. The problem is that I'm bad in geography and math. So I think I know what the right answer is, but <laughs> yeah, I'm pretty sure. I think I know. So we just put it in the chat. Well, no, you can say it out. You you can say it. It's true, right? That's my guess. <laughs> I 
I'm just tallying up. I wonder if everyone's just going to kick ass. We're going to have like an eight way tie. <laughs> That's always my worry with giveaways and competitions. I'm like, there's right? going to be, be like, I'll be like, Shit. now I know what, now what do I do? <laughs> the tie enter, breaker. I could enter into the, uh, the drawing. You could do the stream yard giveaway thing. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Did, oh, yep. I'm just making sure I'm getting everyone's votes here. I didn't see a vote from Leah yet. I mean, if this was, um, what was that show? Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Was that what it was? If this was Poll the Audience, like, Everyone's saying two, uh, except Leah. Lisa hates techno. So Lisa does hate techno, unfortunately. She likes Benny Goodman. <laughs> so, okay. Slide two. Brian Summers is Lisa's vampire BFF. Lisa loves her powers. Lisa belongs to the New England bleed. Oh, sorry, Leah. I might have missed yours from up above. Kenny G. <laughs> I don't know. That might be. Well, everyone's picking two again. Megan and Ben, oh. what do you think? I put mine in the chat. Oh, you did. I just love that people are guessing, even if they haven't read. It. I think that's awesome. <laughs> One three chance. Those are good odds. Yeah, why not? <laughs> yep. And did I commit Eric? And so the lie is that Lisa loves her powers. Um, I'm not sure she's crazy about being a vampire at all, but she's Brian is definitely her, her, her friend and she does belong to the new England bleed and a bleed is kind of the, you know, sometimes you've seen them called like nests or vampire hives or gatherings or territories or whatever. I wanted to come up with my own word. Um, was it the mercy Thompson books by Patricia Briggs, the vampires in a certain region are known as a seethe. So you have like a seethe that lives in this city. And I want to come up with a cool kind of word for my own thing. I like bleed um, way more. So I came up with bleed. What was that, Megan? I said I like bleed way more. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I love, my, my wife said she was going to watch on the TV. <laughs> <laughs> but she's clearly on her computer because she's responding. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's all good. It's all good. We're just having fun. Yeah, that's not cheating. All right. Which is the lie? Lisa uses, Lisa never uses her charming gaze. Lisa can turn into a bat. Ivan McAllister is the house lord of the New England Bleed. Yeah, almost like a coven. 
Yes, you are. everyone running to right i keep i keep looking for ben but it's not ben it's running to right so sorry i keep like where is ben i can sign in on uh on, on no no it's all good <laughs> Oh, this is a good one. So I, I was af I was afraid everyone would just kind of like crush every answer if they read the three episodes, but yeah. Oh, three. Everyone's going with three. And did I get Mina's for this one? She might have. I don't know if she dropped off. I know she had to go to work. Uh, looks like two, unless that was from the last round. Nope. Yep, you're right. All right. So Leo is the only one that got it right. <laughs> Lisa never uses her charming gaze is the lie. She uses it in... Um, in the first episode, I think. Is it the first episode? Yeah, the first episode on that dude. And Ivan. Yep, sorry. I, it's hard because I've like, I see this as like a sea of numbers, then I have to remember was that the last one of the. <laughs> but yeah, Ivan is the, uh, the house lord of the New England bleed. Yes. <laughs> All right, which is the lie. Tracy does not think much of Lisa. Lisa has thralls of her own to feed from. Lisa doesn't feed every day. To be clear, a thrall is, well, it should be, might be self-explanatory, but it's basically a, a, a human that vampires keep on retainer that they can drink from instead of having to go out and hunt. So these sometimes the thralls live with them or they come by their house it could be like DoorDash you know I don't know <laughs> Uber Eats come on drive by and you know that sort of thing what would Uber Eats be called for uh for vampires Uber bleeds <laughs> like that's the only thing that makes sense right I don't know <laughs> oh we get Florida cousins Yes. Yeah, she can turn into a bat and a wolf. Sorry, put two. Put two. <laughs> Oh, that makes it easy. <laughs> I'm trying to give you a break so that you can see Thank where. Uh... <laughs> oh, okay. Hold on. I'm changing because you didn't say I couldn't. That's my old answer. I have a new answer. Yeah, I heard you. <laughs> <laughs> Coffin dash. I love it. Yes. 
Yes. You know, I got to put that in. I got to come up with a way to have that. Like, right? It's it's the 2000s. It's 2018-ish for this story takes place or 2020-ish. I haven't figured. Some nebulous time period. Why wouldn't they have that? All right. The lie is that Lisa has thralls of her own to feed on. She does not. Um, I forget what episode it is. Um, Tracy, I think, brings it up and suggests that, you know, you should get thralls. And she used to have a thrall. And she released him because that's just Lisa. <laughs> Who else? <laughs> if any vampire is going to release a thrall, it would be her. Uh, okay. Two truths and a lie. It's easier to charm someone you know. Drawing on your curse makes you look more deathly. Lisa owns a Honda Civic. <laughs> Everybody loves a Civic. <laughs> I have to I have to give another shout out to Amy by the way. She's she lives in New Zealand and the fact that she's joining is just so cool. And as you can see, she's holding in her hands um Astra's Coda, which is her book. This is a wonderful author community coming together. Thank you Megan. Yes, mine's upstairs. I actually won a copy. I have I have now I've a version on ebook and a physical copy, which is great. Just dropping things over here. It's fine. It's all good. <laughs> oh, yeah. And Amy's also coming up on her one year book anniversary, and she's doing a live stream for that on July 23rd. That's right. That's right. That's right. Yay. 3 p.m. PST? I think so. I, and again, I'm coming through. Nope, I got everybody. Good, 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 good. So the lie was number three. Um, Lisa does not own a Honda Civic. She has no car. And which one is the lie? No, you were right. <laughs> Gave you credit. <laughs> it's all good. Yeah, and Amy's YouTube channel is awesome. All right. Lisa's real name is Siobhan. William Donovan is Lisa's creator. Lisa employs red caps and red caps are nasty little fae that eat things. Usually the dead bodies of vampires that not dead vampires, but the dead bodies that vampires leave behind. They need the evidence to go away. So efficient. Yes. <laughs> Tallying up. 
Right. Yeah. I mean, that's just. Even if you haven't read the series, you could almost, I feel like you can make an educated guess on this one. Does Lisa seem like the type of person that would Harry, uh, hire vicious, nasty Faye to eat corpses? <laughs> it's true, I am. It does. It's like the red socks, but the hats. All right, so the lie is that Lisa employs red caps. She does not. Other people do. I like to think that's because she doesn't really kill people, so she doesn't need their services. <laughs> All right, which is the lie? Vampires originated in Ireland. Brian is missing. This is a specifically arc story arc number one question lisa can turn invisible megan comes right out of the gate with <laughs> have it ready to go <laughs> jeff i want to know are, are you and katrina discussing these answers or do you just <laughs> know them right away That was quick. That was a quick round. <clears throat> yes, number three. Lisa can turn invisible. That is a lie. She cannot turn invisible. She can turn, turn into a wolf or a bat. Oops. <laughs> I wish I forgot these. All right. Which is the lie? Lisa can turn into a wolf. Yeah. Lisa can live off animal blood. Or vampires heal rapidly. Okay, I won't guess as quick this time. I don't want to sway anybody. Jeff and Katrina, go with number two. Did I miss Leah's? I'm scrolling up. She said three. She said three. Oh, yep. Oh, she was like right up in front answering. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you helped him out on that one. It's all good. So the lie is that vampires can live off animal blood. And I wanted to do that because I, one of the things I loved about the book interview with a vampire is I loved the character Louis and I know everyone loves Lestat, but I love the idea of this vampire that was like, no, fuck this. I hate this. You know, I, you know, and he would, if you, if you read the book, he would feed off rats. So he would not have to feed off humans. He didn't want to deal with that. And I thought for someone like Lisa, that was, humane and didn't want to embrace her curse and, and live that kind of life as much as much as she could avoid that would be an easy out for her 
and I didn't I didn't want to give her that. So I wanted to get, stick her with the need to feed off people while um, struggling with it and just having a hard time. Okay. Tracy charges a hundred dollars of feeding. Lisa released her last thrall so he could get married. Aw. Lisa can withstand small amounts of sunlight, which is the lie. Six. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for coming, Mean. I really appreciate it. Have fun with grade fours. Thank you. Sorry, I'm just writing everyone down. <laughs> Meg, did I miss yours? Oh, you, you answered right up on top. All right. The lie is that Tracy charges $100 of feeding. She gouged Lisa for feeding. And I think this is, I think this is the last one. Okay. Which is the lie. Many vampires have packs with dark fae. The older a vampire is, the more dead they look. Lisa can outrun a horse. And I'll warn you, this is a, a hard one. Spooked everybody. <laughs> nobody, nobody wants to. Like, I don't know what to guess. I feel like this is going to be a very nuanced answer. Yep. <laughs> yep. All right. The lie is number two. The older a vampire is, the more dead they look. So that can be the case because usually the more dead you are, the more you've pulled on your curse. But it's really pulling on your curse that does it. You could be a very young vampire and just let this darkness within you consume you. And you could look awful. Um Whereas you could be very, very old and stave off the curse like Lisa does and still retain a lifelike complexion. So awesome. That was. I was a little worried you were going to be like, well, Lisa can't outrun it. But when she's a wolf called wolf. Oh, oh the trick. Yeah. She can outrun it. Like... She has super speed. She does. So I'm just tallying these up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I have a question for Ben really quick. Yeah, how's okay. it going? 
So your setup looks amazing. Do you have a special camera for live streams? Because it's like so much better than mine is. Uh, well, you know, I actually have a video about that, but this is a Logitech HD 1080p. Um, it's it's uh, give me give me a second. I can I can find it, but it, it's just a um, little external camera right on top of my. It's sitting right on top of my computer, so you can see that when I'm staring at the chat, my 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 vision clearly drops, but. Uh, well, I'm going to check out that video because I miss, like, I watch your videos, but then it still doesn't recommend them to me. And I don't know why. So then I have to, like, keep keep just looking it up. So no I worries. I the algorithm. <laughs> yeah, I got my own problems with that. I, uh, I'm, I'm subscribed. I, I got to figure out how Vela works because I'm subscribed right now, but I didn't get an update that, um, that the newest episodes were posted today. So, yeah, I I've heard that. Yeah, that some people haven't. I didn't either. I'll figure it out. I just did it. So I was like, I got to read them. It was a bit of a trick question. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so the winner, I tallied everything up. The winner is Megan. Ooh, that's me. I have to exclude my wife from the prizes. I, although I'll give her anything she wants. That's I just don't want any confusion there. If she wants anything from my merch store, she can have it. <laughs> but other than my wife, the... The winner is Megan. <laughs> so we can, we, uh, y'all reach off to you off, offline and see what you might be interested in. Uh, if there's nothing there that strikes your fancy, we can talk about uh, an Amazon gift card instead. I definitely want merch. So, merch. Yes. Awesome. So that. Gives. I also wanted to craft that that game to give a little taste of what, you know, how vampires kind of are in my setting. I know um, I did a video on it. If you follow my YouTube channel, I have this thing called Creature Spotlights, where I talk about um, different supernatural beasties that I think deserve more of a spotlight in fantasy fiction. Um, and I was never intending to do vampires because there's a lot of fantasy fiction about vampires. But because I was doing the series, I, I wanted to kind of pro promote it. So I did it on my vampires and I talked about what, they, you know, how they are. Um, what other creatures have you spotlighted? Oh, um, wow. Let's see. I, well, I did red caps. Um, the first one I did was sirens. I love sirens. And I really wanted to kind of jab at the whole idea that everyone keeps putting them in the water and making them mermaids. And I'm like, no, no, they were trapped on the island. They couldn't, they were stuck. They couldn't swim away. They were, you know, one of them drowned, <laughs> you know? So um, I talked about them. I talked about, um, wow, I'm going to, I'm going to forget um, the, the cat. The, oh yeah, the, the cat, uh, the Bakineko, right? Mm -hmm. The Japanese cat demons. Um, why am I drawing a blank on the Korean? Oh, the Gumiho, the Gumiho, which is mm -hmm. like a, a fox. If you think of like a Kitsune, who's like a nine-tailed fox from Japan, the Gumiho is a nine-tailed fox from Korea. Um, very, di very different. Um, I talked about goblins and not like the, the D and D type goblins, but the traditional like fae like goblins and different versions of them. Uh, the puck which is a native American um, beastie that lives, that lived in Massachusetts, according to the Wampanoag and the Nipmuc tribes, uh, the folklore therein. So yeah, there's a bunch of different creatures and stuff like that. It's a, it's a fun, it's a fun series to do. I like, it just gives me an excuse to read up on monsters, basically. I was get excited for your creature spotlight. I'm like, yes, oh, thanks. <laughs> you didn't say I win. Oh, I did win. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so for the next game, I have to figure out how to share my screen, which. I don't know how to do. <laughs> um, 
I got it. Are you, does, is it pulled up on Google Chrome? Yeah. Um, okay. So you should be able to hit the share on the bottom next to leave studio or end. There should be a share button and then it should pop up with different options. And sometimes it'll just show you what window you want to share. Oh, okay. So I go share, share screen, did you say? Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can and do it down to the end, you know, the browser, whatever yeah. you have up. Or you can just share the entire screen, I think. Although you might need to grant permissions. Oh, okay. I think this is it. I think I think I got it. Did Sweet. I do it? Something. I see it's loading. Do you see it? There we go. Power's face Can't off. Fire. Racket fight. Yeah. Yes. So oh, I don't know if I can get it to fit all in the entire in all the same um thing can you zoom in control plus or something yeah let me try that oh okay so when you clicked it did you go to chrome tab or did you click entire screen i clicked um chrome tab okay does that work yep yeah, we'll do that. Yeah, I can see it. So I this is interesting. So for me to interact with this um, screen, I have to be on the other tab and I can't see the chats. So uh, Megan or Ben, can you tally up from the chat who votes for what? Like, sure. Yes, let me. And then I can pick we and we get this. There's no winner here. This is just us having fun and deciding for ourselves which is the coolest vampire power. Okay, I have paper now. So basically how this works, well, you know, it's obvious, right? This is like March Madness or any of the sports, like anyone that uses brackets. But I'll describe a little bit of the, the powers and then, you know, we pick um what we think the cooler power is and that could be based on anything it, it would, would you rather have that power versus the other power or is it just cooler in general whatever your criteria it doesn't matter so i'm going to start on the left side with these top ones awe and charming gaze so awe is i took from the vampire the masquerade role-playing game and it's the idea that you can just walk in and your mere presence turns heads. You can't control people, but you get everyone's attention and they're, they become a little partial towards you. Versus charming gaze, which is more the traditional vampire power, look you in the eye, hypnotic, you kind of get them under your sway. So with awe, you can kind of get a room to notice you. Um, but with charming gaze, you can get one person who you can really persuade. So which is the cooler power? Oh, mortality. I didn't think of that one. <laughs> Oh, my husband would 100% disagree with you, Ben. I think he would just spend forever just watching movies and playing games. I, he could totally fill up his time doing just that. Just have the gift of time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We've had this conversation before, and he's like, oh, I could fill up my time. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at, at some point, you would read all the books in existence and watch all the shows. I'm, but they're continuous. Like, they just keep going. 
Oh, I'm liking the split here. Yeah, right now I think I'm at four to two for uh, Gaze versus Awe. Yep, that's what I have. Right. That's right, the ongoing series. I have a feeling that it would be more like people who always say, well, if I just had more time and then we'd have all that time and we would really just like sit there. Like we wouldn't learn anything new. We wouldn't do anything. It would just be like, we'd just be lumps just sitting there. Hey, they are starting to wrap up the story. They're coming to the final arc. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. Is it really 20 years? Oh my god. I'm pretty sure that might even just be for the anime. The the oh, let me figure this out. The manga might because be going longer. The manga might be longer. Nineteen ninety seven. Wow. That's longer than I've been married. <laughs> oh, yeah, and Lauren yeah. brings up a great point. If you live forever, you great. outlive that would your... Be, that would be heartbreaking. Yep. Yeah. It looks like it's going to be... Uh, Charming Gaze has four and Awe has three, unless I did that wrong. That's my count, too. Okay. So, one by one. Yep. So, sorry, was that Charming Gaze that win? Yes. All right. Durable versus Rapid Healing. Durable, the bullets bounce off you. Rapid healing, you heal after you've been shot. <laughs> so Wolverine versus uh, Colossus, I guess, if you're an X-Men fan. Mm. Is it weird I mean, my mind just went to cheerleader? I from... have. Oh, sorry, what, Megan? Oh, I said, is it weird that my Mine just went to cheerleader from Heroes. I was like, huh, the cheerleader. Like, oh, she... perfect. Yeah, perfect example. <laughs> Claire. Yeah, Claire. <laughs> yeah, you're like yeah. X-Men. I'm like, oh, Heroes. <laughs> yep. I mean, I know which one I'd rather have, but then which one is cooler? You know, like what looks cooler? It's like if I was watching a movie, you know? I don't want to sweaty boat, so I won't save my thoughts. <laughs> Ooh, two to two right now, so it's a pretty good tie. <laughs> I mean, I feel like Wolverine's a little unfair because with the adamantium, he's kind of a little bit more durable. Yeah, as he's, well he's as also kind of, it might not have been a good comparison because he's a little both. Okay, so I think the next person is going to be the tiebreaker. Oh, yeah, it's up to three to three now. Oops. We were down Amy, I think. We might have had someone drop. Do we? Well, Amy just posted something. Oh, she might nope. be the. Nope. That's the title. Hey. All right. That's like healing. All right. Four to one. Or, sorry, four to three. All right. Might versus speed. Strength versus speed.
<laughs> With great power. <laughs> We got two to one, starting to pick our sides for uh, speed. Three to two, still in speed's favor. Yep, four to two. I think that's going to win it for speed. Ooh, four to three. Came back strong, but not strong enough. That should do it. All right. All right, bat form versus wolf form. I wanted to get back to the the Dracula, you know, roots. I mean, everyone wants to put their own spin on stuff, but I'm like, let's get back to the cool OG, you know, the original source material. All right, one to one bet to wolf. Ooh, yeah. two to one. Favor of the bat. Three to one. Four, five, five to one. Ooh. Wow. I was a little stressed on that one. Ooh, that. one. Just so much more versatile. Yeah. So the uh, the bat form since since vampires are Irish in origin in this setting, I wanted to research bats in Ireland, and I figured I wanted to give them the largest bat species I could find in Ireland. And <laughs> because I thought, you know, I didn't want like a big fruit bat looking thing, but I certainly wanted something that was just like, you know, the classic vampire looking bat thing flying in the night air and all this stuff. And it turns out the largest species of bat in Ireland is the Leicester's bat, which will fit in the palm of your hand. Very tiny, little fuzzy lump. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, that's it. I mean, I want to keep it Irish. So they turned into these little <laughs> tiny little things. Um, but I gave them these things called uh, tolan, which is the Irish word for tunnel. And a lot of vampire sanctuaries will have, or homes will have these little hidden, because bats are like rodents. They'll, they can get into small spaces, anything to, they can get their head into. Um, so they have these little tunnels that they can kind of like escape into and from to get it in and out of their house if they need to in a, in a jam. So it actually worked out pretty well that they were tiny and cute. Do they live in, um, is, a, is that a specific species that lives in New Zealand, Amy? All right. I know, right? I love bats. All right, let's switch over to the other side. Alternate foods or resist sunlight. These are kind of like vampire perks if you already got a lousy go of it. You know, being able to, a vampire that can drink, say, for example, animal blood as an alternative or being able to resist sunlight. What's the cool, help? what's the cooler helpful power or whatever, I guess. Only native mammal? Oh my god, there's so many invasive species. <laughs> All right, three or two for sunlight. Yep.
even split three to three. So next person, sign factor. Who are we missing? Oh, there we go. Yep. Food wins. Food. <laughs> yep. I mean, can my thing just be cake? Like, I can just eat cake and I'm good? Cake. Yeah, the cake vampire. That's, I kind of already am that. <laughs> um, dream walking or psychic? So, this is, I guess, when I say psychic, I guess, mean, I should have put like ESP, you know, you can see the future or that sort of thing. Or you can go into someone's dreams. It's a tough one. Four to one. Four to a lot one. of a lot of fans of Dreamwalking. Yep. Four to two. I think it's Dreamwalking. Yep. Heightened hearing or heightened smell. I think that depends mostly on where you live, too. <clears throat> That's true. That's a good point. Are we like, I don't know, city, country, what? Um, I don't know. I didn't really specify. <laughs> I, I guess it's just control general. them. Like I could have normal hearing, but then if I want to hear better. I feel like you're for a vampire, you're probably you're in the city, right? Because that's where the food would be. You're mm -hmm. among people at least. You could be in the suburbs, I suppose, but oh hearing definitely has this one. Oh, wow. boom. That's like a landslide. <laughs> Mist form or shadow meld? You can like disappear into the shadows, like literally like teleport through shadows, travel through them. Looks like Shadow has it. Yep. Nice. Yep. All right. Now going back over to the other side, we now have Gaze versus Rapid Healing. Charming Gaze versus Rapid Healing. I tried to at least pair them up into like categories. So you didn't like have to choose between super strength and heightened smell, for example, <laughs> you know, out of the gate, but. I think you did pretty good. All right, we got three to one healing to gaze. And it looks like healing has it. Mm -hmm. All right. Speed versus bat form. I feel like I know what's going to happen. <laughs> Amy, I'm shocked at your answer. <laughs> <laughs> All caps back. <laughs> Got four to one. Mm. 
Five to one. Sweet. Yep. All right. All right. Alternate foods or dream walking? My God, with the mini bats. <laughs> Now, Jeff, are you and Katrina united in your vote? Do you each want different separate votes? I should have asked you. One for Jeff wants speed and Katrina wants bats. <laughs> oh, so close. Oh. oh. It looks like Dream Walking has it. Dream, dream, dream. Wise. Dream walk. Dream walk. Yeah. Yep. I too. Heightened hearing or shadow meld? So I feel like you're the oh, same. Fair fair What's that, Megan? Oh, I said I feel like me and Ben are like the same on all our answers. <laughs> no, no, there were a few. There was one of them where I was the only one. That's true. Shadows, shadows, mm -hmm. shadow. Wow. Yep. Oh, it might not be of, shadows versus bats. I'm kind of with Amy on this one a little bit because, I mean, if you're a predator, you want to have good senses, but. Shadow takes it. All right, we're zoning in. Rapid healing versus bat form. Cute little fuzzy bats. <laughs> Amy is consistent. <laughs> uh, looks like three to two. Uh, three to three. <laughs> oh, there it is. Healing. I'm, I'm very surprised. Wow. The healing edged out the bats. Wow. Am I counting yep. this right? Wow. Yeah. Four to three. All right. Dream walking versus shadow meld. I mean, you're awake while your prey is asleep, right? Usually. I took the shadow thing from the La Sombra clan from the Vampire the Masquerade role playing game. Which that's where I created Lisa initially in the in White Wolf Vampire the Masquerade role playing game back in 1993. She was a role playing game character. Oh wow! Uh, looks like it's three to two in favor of the shadows. Yes. Still missing two more. Unless you want to change your votes. <laughs> looks like Shadow has taken it. Yep. All right. Shadow versus Rapid Healing for the win. Can you choose? Three to one in favor of healing. Four to one. Yeah, so healing wins. Wow. I, you know, honestly, I couldn't have predicted this. That's awesome. You know, when I initially put all these different powers on the board, I thought, oh, you know, 
I, I, I thought Shadow would be pretty popular, but I thought, oh, Wolf, Wolf and Bat will go far, or Wolf or Bat will go far. But yeah, that was fun. That was awesome. But yeah, Lisa fun. was a role playing game character, and I don't know is has anyone heard of um, the Vampire the Masquerade role playing game? Eric, I know you have. Exactly. Yeah. If you're a healer, then if you can heal yourself, then you're your own cleric. <laughs> but yeah, Eric, I know you have. <laughs> but um, back in the early 90s, the idea of playing like a werewolf or a vampire in a role playing game was unheard of because the only game in town was Dungeons and Dragons back then. So it was pretty cool. And the, uh, the, you know, the whole premise of playing a vampire character was never done before, but the whole thing was called like the world of darkness. It was the whole idea of you play a vampire, but your humanity's slipping away and there's this beast in you and you crave blood and it's a downward spiral and all this blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, this sounds great. But then they gave you these stats on your character sheet, uh, with thing with words like humanity, willpower self-control, conviction, right? And if you build those up, then you can resist things like frenzy. You can resist freaking out at the sight of fire, or you can shrug off the temptation of like losing your cool if you get the smell of blood and all this kind of stuff. And I went, in this bleak world of darkness, that's the vampire I want to play. I want to play someone who has her shit together. So... That's where Lisa came from. But where all, everyone else was putting experience points into beefing up their powers and being like super strong and super fast and all this kind of stuff, I was like the, the mind person with the strong will and all this stuff. So I couldn't do much in combat. But when it came time to like, when the storyteller was like, okay, roll this to frenzy, I was like, nope, I'm fine. You know, and I always had my shit together at every single crisis when it really mattered. So it was a fun game. Nice. That sounds really fun. Yeah. Why can't Lisa turn into a raven instead of a bat? You mean like this raven right here? Wait, where? I can't point at it there. <laughs> uh, keep reading. That's a good question. It's an interesting question. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. Last game. And this is a vampire trivia. I'm definitely going to lose. Why did I make this so hard to read? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the Muppet Vampire, Count Von Count, that is his name. Uh, from Sesame Street is based on an actual vampire myth. What was the myth? Was it A, a Welsh knight tricked eight vampires into counting 1,000, counting to 1,000, and he kept interrupting them every so often, making them lose count until the sun came up? B, one way to supposedly deter vampires to throw seeds. Vampires are compelled to count the seeds delaying them until the sun comes up or C in Ireland vampires were believed to be made out of purple felt like a Muppet. <laughs> so which is the correct one? Wants to be a vampire and millionaire. This was a hard one. So this one, I'm not keeping score. This is just for fun. Do your best. And um, then I'll do a random drawing for the final prize. I know I really picked the wrong background for this. I tried to like, 
pale out the little vampire picture in the back, and I, I should have made it better. <laughs> So the correct answer is B. I made up the Welsh night thing. Um, and that apparently for the, for the legend, um, they, they threw sesame seeds, which is funny because it's Sesame Street and the vampire and the count and Jim Henson, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> And this is just a little factoid. Prehistoric stone monuments called dolmens have been found all over graves of the dead in Northwest Europe. Anthropologists speculate they have been placed over graves to keep vampires from rising. People really believed that you could come back from the dead. So they put a big weight over your burial mound. <laughs> What coincidence? I read that in his voice. <laughs> All right. Some vampires were based off actual historical people. Which one of these was not one of those people? A, Vlad Tepes. B, Elizabeth Bathory. C, Ed McMahon. Does anyone... Remember Ed Yeah, Ed McMahon. If you picked Ed McMahon, you may already be a winner. Publishers Clearing House. What was it? The Publishers Clearing Clearing House Sweepstakes? Tonight show. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> hmm. I figured I made it hard because you can't read it, so I had to make the clues a little easy. <laughs> All right, one of the earliest accounts of vampires found in an ancient Sumerian and Babylonian myth dating back to 4000 BCE, which describes Ekinimu or Edimu, one who is snatched away. The Ekimu is a type of uh, Uruku, a spirit or demon, who is not buried properly and has returned as a vengeful spirit to suck the life out of the living. So this whole concept of vampires even though they weren't being called that has been around for thousands and thousands of years even going back to mesopotamia cool yeah right she was uh she was pretty awful <laughs> which of these actors did not play dracula millard fillmore christopher lee Bella Lugosi. Oh, Sharon. Oh, my God. Thanks for joining. That's awesome. Yes, Elizabeth Bathory would have made a good succubus. Who did not play Dracula? Did we get all the votes in? Yes, Millard Fillmore did not play Dracula. He was a president sometime ago. I don't know when. 
<laughs> Before my time. We're not scoring these, so it doesn't matter. We're just having fun. In 2009, a 16th century female skull with a rock wedged in its mouth was found near the remains of, of plague victims. It was not unusual during that century to shove a rock or brick in the mouth of a suspected vampire to prevent it from feeding on the bodies of other plague victims or attacking the living. Vampires were off, also often blamed for spreading the bubonic plague throughout Europe. So, yeah, even in the Middle Ages, there were people that honestly believed vampires were a real threat. Crazy. Which of these is not a common vampire weakness or limitation in folklore? Vampires can't see their own reflection. Vampires can't enter a threshold of a house unless invited. Vampires can't cross over running water, or D, none of these. Absolutely true. Yeah, so all of them are, yeah, <laughs> all of them that have been vampire weaknesses or limitations at some point in whatever folklore you may have heard them from. Like if there was a bridge with a stream underneath it, a vampire couldn't cross over that bridge type of a thing. We've heard the, the reflection thing. We've heard that one in the entering the house. So, D. Before Christianity, methods of repelling vampires included garlic, hawthorn branches, rowan trees later used to make crosses, scattering seeds, fire, decapitation with a grave digger's spade, salt, um, iron, bells, a rooster's crow, peppermint, and running water. Um, I can't imagine what they had to do to these bodies afterwards if they really believed this stuff. And I wonder, and I, I couldn't find this in my research, but I wonder if all this talk about like using branches and, and particular types of wood led to the whole idea of staking a vampire. But hmm. that's conjecture. I don't know. After Christianity, which methods were commonly considered as effective means of repelling a vampire? Holy water, crucifixes, Eucharist wafers, holy water, Bibles, crucifixes, or holy water, oop, can't make that thing go away. Holy water, damn it. It's showing that little thing underneath there. Uh, holy water, crucifixes, chanting prayer. This one's a little tough, I think. I instantly wanted to go with holy water, and then I was like, wait a second. Yeah, right? I, it's, a, it's a combination. Like, which, which yeah. one doesn't belong? You have to almost pick the one. Oh, that's cool. I never heard that one. Rose petals. I agree. <laughs> so the answer is A. Holy water crucifixes and Eucharist wafers. I actually never heard of the Eucharist wafers. Like you, I don't know what you do there. You just shove a little 
cookie in his mouth and I'm not sure you want to get that close. <laughs> like you just eat it? Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm safe. I'm like, hmm. Or you just like wrap them around your neck. Might be more of you proving that you're not a vampire by going to church and eating the wafers. Yep. <laughs> that sunlight can kill vampires seems to be a modern invention, perhaps started in the U.S., government to scare superstitious gorillas in the Philippines in the 1950s. While sunlight can be used by vampires to kill other vampires, as Anne Rice, Anne Rice's popular novel, Interview with a Vampire, other vampires such as Lord Ruthven and Varney were able to walk in the daylight. Even um, Dracula, in many depictions, walked in the daylight. Um, but... I do need to point out that the what 1920 something movie Nosferatu, um, he saw the sunlight and perished. So that the idea certainly was older than the 1950s. They pushed it on the forehead. <laughs> Much more logical. Yeah. People took precautions against corpses rising up as vampires even as late as the mid-18th century, which, which one of these methods was not used to prevent vampires? Burying face down so the vampire would bury deeper into the earth instead of burying to the surface, decapitation, or tying their shoelaces together. Oh, really? <laughs> That's cool. Yeah, I was being silly. It's C. <laughs> Only if you play a uh, Benny Hill in the background. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> According to some legends, a vampire may engage in sex with its former wife, which often led to pregnancy. In fact, the belief may have provided a convenient explanation as to why a widow who was supposed to be celibate became pregnant. Rather than being ostracized, the, the child was considered a hero who had powers to slay a vampire. <laughs> so I mean, that's a win for everybody. <laughs> Especially the widow. Um... No, it was a vampire, I swear. And then your child's a hero. In ancient vampire folklore of Europe, vampires did not have a human shape and were once human and were not once human. Instead, what were they? Fleshy bags of blood with sharp with a sharp nose that could puncture and drink blood, a small goblin like creature, or a blood drinking bat. It's a tough one. This was a tough one. And, and when I found my research, I was like, and of course, you know, as, as Sharon pointed out, I mean, there's vampires all over different cultures and stuff and what's a vampire, but um, this was certainly one interpretation of, of them. So I threw the bat in there just to be a red herring, I think. But the answer is a fleshy bags of blood with sharp noses that could puncture and drink blood. I just think that's more horrible than anything that John Carpenter or anyone could come up with, you know? 
That's just gross. And there's there's versions of that that if they drink enough, they get they begin to grow bones and take on a human shape and then they can blend in with humanity and then they become much more dangerous because you can't identify them amongst other people so the folklore a lot of different folklore got yeah it's it's gross i'm sorry <laughs> <laughs> i apologize but it is it is gross yeah i don't know this is like the age of antiquity some ancient crazy stuff I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's move on. <laughs> After dark episode, it's perfectly fine. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Folklore vampires can become vampires, and only through a only through a bite. But also, if they were once a werewolf, if a werewolf practiced sorcery and were excommunicated, sorry, I'm blending these together. Folklore vampires can become vampires not only through a bite, but also if they were once a werewolf, practiced sorcery, were excommunicated, or were a legitimate child of parents who were illegitimate <laughs> themselves. In addition, anyone who had eaten the flesh of a sheep killed by a wolf was the seventh son was the child of a pregnant woman who was looked upon by a vampire, was a nun who stepped over the un buried body, had teeth when they were born, or had a cat jump on their course before they were buried, could all turn into a vampire. So more crazy folklore. I mean, can you imagine just being like, <laughs> sorry, you're the seventh son. Bad news for you. <laughs> and excommunicated, like the Catholic Church kicks you out. Oh, sorry, you're a vampire now. That <laughs> sucks to be you. In the Balkans, it was believed that pumpkins and watermelons could become vampires if let out longer than 10 days. Pumpkins and watermelons could become vampires if not consumed by Christmas. A drop of blood on a fruit skin is a sign that it is about to turn into a vampire. All of the above. This was among some of the weirdest vampire lore I found. <laughs> yeah, pumpkins and watermelons would become vampires if left out longer than 10 days. Pumpkins and watermelons would become vampires if not consumed by Christmas. A drop of blood on a fruit skin is a sign that it's about to turn into a vampire. All of these. Yeah, um, all of these were each folklores associated with a rotten fruit turning into vampires. I'm nervous. And, I, I have watermelons growing in my front lawn right now. And it's not like they, they like turn into Bella Lugosi or something. They just describe them as these kind of like jack-o'-lantern things that would try to like bite you. But they only had the teeth as strong as the rind of a pumpkin or a watermelon. So they weren't very effective, but you'd still, you know, you were always encouraged to dispose of your produce before Christmas. <laughs> I swear I'm not making this up. Indeed. <laughs> See, all of you stuck around to the end. This is the good stuff. <laughs> They turn into one. I hope not. <laughs> the blob. See, I'm gonna write a, a book about this, and then everyone's gonna be like, "That's unbelievable!" Like, yeah, no. <laughs> that's stupid. <laughs> Bella Lugosi, famous for portraying Count Dracula, was buried in his full Dracula costume, including his cape. And that's the last. That's the last. Megan, please write that book. <laughs> Wait. I'll think about it. Talk about blood oranges. Oh, <laughs> what, what, that was a miss, right? I mean, what an opportunity that would have been. 
that's the obvious one. <laughs> Nicole, thanks for joining. Oh my God. <clears throat> Yes, I didn't know about the rose petals. That's very cool. Hmm? Blood apples. Is blood apples a thing? Is that, do they exist? <laughs> I don't know. I know, right? He, he may have been. <clears throat> So it's coming up on 20 of 10 in the East Coast anyway. I I got to say, I thank you all so much for joining. I, this has been, I'm very touched. And I hope you, um, I hope you check out my series. And um, if you like it, give, give the thumbs up. They, uh, they call, you no, know, they're, they're likes, but Amazon calls them thumbs up. And um, follow the series if you're, if you haven't already. There's a lot of, cool stuff I have planned. I have, I'm writing episode 15 right now. So I have a lot in store. Um, I was first recorded in 18 and it originates from the curse of Growry, Scotland. Oh my God. That is insane. We're all just Googling this apple now. <laughs> Yeah, I enjoyed it too. But like anything else, you know, Amazon has these crazy algorithms where if they, if you're, you know, however many follows I have or thumbs ups and, and reviews and all this kind of stuff, they're more likely to put my story in front of um, other readers you know if someone's reading another vampire story someone might amazon might say oh you know you might like this one too um and that's really what i'm looking for just kind of more people to read my story and just i that's why we write right we just want to get our story out there believe me i make half a cent on every token that is spent on these kindle vela series so i mean i might make 25 cents off 200 tokens spent, which would be like, you know, eight, eight, eight episodes or something like that. I can't do the, you know, whatever the math is, but it's, uh, it's not a big money maker, Kendall Vela. <laughs> I'm really just doing it because I love the storytelling, to be honest. Oh no, no. Yeah. I'm just so happy you showed up. I love I love your your trilogy, Sharon. I am loving the uh, the goddesses. I <laughs> uh, thank you all so much for joining. Oh, we have to, I have to pick the the last winner of the the thing. Um, What's the easiest way to do this? I'll summon my my trusty Echo Dot. And <laughs> Computer, roll a D8. Six. Six. Leah is the winner. Wow. <laughs> wow. Leah is the winner. Mother no. of God. Cleaning up on the broadcast. The... Uh, I do have a merch store. It's in it's in the um, it's in the description below, um, but that's the URL as well. Or if, um, if Leah, if you prefer an Amazon gift card, uh, I was going to do a Amazon a ten dollar Amazon gift card in lieu of um, the prize. If you're not if you're not interested in you know writerly prizes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good job. Oh my God. Have I been calling Sharon Shannon? I'm so sorry. I'm like, flaking out. <laughs> thank you for correcting me. Lauren. 
<laughs> I'm sorry. Yes. Oh, I'm glad. Um, we can arrange that through Megan if you want, or if you want to email me at um. Where's my where'd my banners go? And that email address. And for for those who showed up, um, and I'll I'll announce again. Everyone who who came to the the stream today also gets a prize. It's a it's a sticker. It's a little round sticker. If you if you want one, send me an email and I will mail this out to you. Um, it's basically this this art on a on a sticker. I don't know. If, it's got the cellophane on it, so it's a little shiny. But send those out if you want one. Email me at jmchaley1918 at gmail.com. Sorry about that. I don't know why it flaked. Uh, the bat <laughs> team bats. We'll make a you know, maybe next year. <laughs> Can I get more uh New Zealanders up here to, to vote for bats? Oh, thank you, Leah. I appreciate it. She'll do it too. She'll definitely wrap you up in Washington. She'll just walk around and things. <laughs> Good deal. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Yeah, stickers. All right. Thanks, Amy. Well, I guess that's it. Guys, thank you so much. I'm going to wrap it up. Thank you all so much for joining. I really appreciate it. Um, I really hope you enjoy the series. I had a lot of fun writing it. Uh, Lisa, like I said, is a character I created in 1993, and she's been rattling around in my head playing Vampire the Masquerade role-playing game and stuff like that. Um, love you too, Katrina. See you, to you Jeff. Um, it's just, it's getting her story out there has just been very personal and fun for me because she's one of these characters. And you know, if you write, these characters get into, under your skin and into your heart. And when you start putting them down on paper, you're just like, yeah, here they are. And you just want to share it. Bye. Thank you so much. Have a good night, everybody. My exact shirt is it there? It's well, it it should look like this, but have it have uh, the unlife of Elisa Cooper on it. I changed it so it has the writing on it. Um, and then if you want it on a mug or something like that, or a notebook or anything like that, it's you can get it that way too. If you want it done this way, we can talk. <laughs> you just do it without the writing if you want. That's not a problem at all. Thanks for joining. Definitely send me an email if you want something custom made. I'll definitely, definitely hook you up. All right. Bye, everyone. Yes. <laughs>